When you first log into Email Blaster, you'll be taken to this dashboard screen. Email Blaster is cloud-based, so you can access the software from any web browser with an internet connection via a secure username and password. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at what we can see in front of us. First of all, if we look at the four colored tiles across the top, the top left blue one shows us how many send credits we have left out of our monthly allowance. And the next one, the green one, this is a top-up pot. Now this is generally used if you don't want to move your regular monthly subscription, but you need to purchase some extra top-ups just to get you through a busy month. Moving along, the yellow box is the total number of subscribers you've got uploaded inside the software. Now this is not at all linked to billing, so you're very welcome to upload as many subscribers as you want to. Billing is purely based on the number of emails that you send. So the way that a credit works, a credit is one email. So if you have a list of 2,000 people and you want to send them an email once a month, you would need a package that gives you 2,000 sends. Conversely, if you want to send them out an email five times a month, you would need a package that gives you 10,000 sends. Now moving along, the red box is a messaging system. So if you want to message us or we want to message you, we'll do so inside here. So next up in the center here, the wavy line graph shows us a quick snapshot of the last four campaigns that we have sent out. And if we hover over it, we can see that it will then display the, uh, the number of clicks or reads that a various campaign has got. Moving along to the right hand side is a calendar. Now with the software you can set up emails to be sent at any date or time. So the little blue bubbles here will show us what activity we've got scheduled at what particular day. And we can click on any one of these and we can then go into that activity by clicking on it. So moving back across to the top dark blue bar, everything that you're going to need to navigate your way around the software is going to be up here. Okay. So looking at the top bar, the main navigation is off of the three little lines icon. This will open up the main navigation to take you through all of the tasks that you need. So we'll get back to that shortly. Across the top here, we've also got a search bar. So you can search in, so you can search for an email address or a campaign. Now back across the top here, question mark icon will give you the help options. There's a big library of video tutorials inside here. So these are designed to be quick answers to quick questions. So if you're looking for something, say, relating to uploading images, we can type that in and the software will then present to us all of the videos that are related around images. They're also grouped into titles here. So C Builder is the design builder. These are the videos that relate to designing an email. Also across the top here, the little person icon, if we click on that, it opens up a further menu. From here in the settings menu, this is where we would go to change a password. Now there are additional security features that we can switch on inside this section here. These would be two-factor authentication, which you can link up to a mobile device, and also whitelisted IPs. So you can specify the nominated IP addresses that are okay to use Email Blaster. Sender profiles is where you would go to create sending identities. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. Now what sender profiles are, are effectively business cards is the best way to think of that. When you send out an email campaign, the software will ask you, who do you want that email to appear as being from? This is where you would drag across one of the sender profiles. So we can create new sender profiles up here with the plus icon, or we can delete them with the rubbish bin icon. So if you've got multiple members of your team using Email Blaster, everybody can have their own sender profile so that when your emails go out, each person can have their own specific emails going out from them. Also up the top here, we've got billing information. So every time your monthly subscription runs, if you're on a monthly account on the first of each month, a PDF invoice will be generated a few days beforehand inside there. Also, if you purchase ad hoc credits throughout the month, your invoice will be generated inside that section. Okay, we're gonna go back to the dashboard and now we're gonna start working our way along the menu items. So the first job that we would probably want to do is to import a list. So we're gonna click on import list here. Now all we got to do is drag and drop a list from our desktop or we can browse to view our computer's hard drive. I've got a list on my desktop and I'm gonna drag that over just here and drop it. 
First up is the GDPR declaration. Now I'm going to say that these are businesses, it's our own list, and that these are customers, and that everybody has opted in. Now the software is intended to be used for you to send out to opted in subscribers. This being people that you have generated yourself if they've signed up via your company website, etc. Email Blaster doesn't permit the usage of third party or purchase lists. So we ask that a positive opt-in is in place for everybody that you email. Now here we're going to put a little bit of text just to remind people of why you're receiving this mailer. The reason for putting that is that every email that's sent out using the software will automatically have an unsubscribe link appended at the bottom of it. Also, there will be a little link next to that that says, why am I receiving this email? If people click on that, they'll be directed to a page that displays this little bit of text. The idea is it just reminds people of why they are receiving your email and how they opted in to receive it. Okay, let's hit agree at the bottom here. So this screen that we're looking at, this is the software saying to us, okay, I can see your list of email addresses, your spreadsheet. Now tell me what to do with it. So the software already knows that this first column is email addresses, so we don't need to do anything here. So as a bare minimum, you can import just email addresses if you want to, but the software supports mail merge, so you can import other columns of data. So with this one, for example, we've got first names and we've got last names and we've got company names. So the import format is a standard Microsoft Excel file. If you go to File and Save As, if you select CSV as the file format, that's the standard import format. So the way that you'd lay your spreadsheet out is you could have one column of email addresses, one column of first names, column of last names and company names, and other fields of data. So we're going to pick some of the stock ones here. So we hit the drop down menu at the top and we hit first name. And these are last names and this is company names. Now the software supports additional mail merge fields up to 50. So if you have your own unique columns of data and you want to title them as you want, you can upload up to 50 additional columns of data. Now anything that we upload here means that it will be available to us to use as mail merge when we get into designing our email. So let's now hit next. Okay, we've now got the choice whether to create a brand new list or we can top up an existing list. I'm going to create a brand new list and let's call that my customers. Okay. The software will now clean your data and in this instance we can see it's taken about a minute to do. Now what it's looking for here are dead domains or invalid data or people who have previously opted out and asked to be suppressed from further mailings. By dead domains, we mean that the company may have gone belly up and the domain doesn't exist anymore, or it could be that the address is spelt incorrectly and therefore not valid. And also people who have opted out historically from your mailings and they've asked to be removed from all future mailings. Now this ensures that you're totally fail safe and GDPR compliant and you're not accidentally importing people who may have opted out. Okay, let's hit exit here. Right, so where we are now, we're now on the subscriber list screen. Now this is where all of your data is kept. Now when you upload your data, you're uploading it to one of our secure servers based in Milton Keynes in Buckinghamshire. Email Blaster is an entirely UK based company. When you upload your data, it will never go overseas. Our, all of our servers are UK based and fully GDPR compliant in our role as the data processor. Okay, so what we're looking at here are folders. Now all of your lists can be grouped inside folders. We can create new folders by hitting the plus icon and we can click to view lists that we've got inside these folders just by clicking on them. Here's that list we just imported called My Customers. Now anything can be moved so I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to drop that into a new folder. So let's go into that. Now if we want to see a list we can go into that just here. So let's click on that list. Now when we imported that list, the software scanned it and cleaned it and it gave it a score which we can see at the bottom here. Now if we want to see the domains that were removed, 
we can click on the little download arrow just here and we can download a report, a CSV spreadsheet, and that will show us all of the data that was removed on import. If we want to look for a particular subscriber, we can do that by just hitting the button at the bottom here and we can type their address in at the top there. So here's all of our email addresses. Here's all of the first names and the last names and the company name. Now by default, everybody is tagged as active. When you start using this list, their statuses may change. If emails bounce, they'll be tagged as red for bounced. If people unsubscribe, they'll be tagged as yellow for unsubscribe. Now we can filter those results so we can look at whatever we want just here. So if after we sent out an email we had a few bounces, we can target those and have a look at them by just selecting to view the bounces. Okay, we can also toggle columns on and off when we're looking at it, and we can hide data that doesn't have anything in there. The software also has a tagging system, so we can start to create data segments of this list by associating tags with groups of people or individuals. Now you can have as many of these as you want to and you can name them exactly as you want. So we can start creating tags just here with the tagging system. When you upload a new list, you can also opt to have it uploaded into a tagged section of subscribers. Let's now come out of that just here. Okay, other options that we have on this page, we can merge lists just here. We can delete lists just here and we can manage our own custom mail merge fields just there. Now most pages will have the question mark icon on and whenever you see that it means that there is help available. It means that you can browse some of the videos or you can start a live chat session with us here at the office. Let's come out of that section. So we're now going to build a campaign. So, so far we've uploaded a list. We've looked at how those lists are managed and stored and the tools associated with working with them. So now we're going to build a campaign. So we click build campaign. We've got four choices here. So starting on the right hand side, my gallery is where we would go if we want to create custom templates that we are going to use over and over again as master templates. It's just a handy place to keep them separate from everything else. The software also supports SMS campaigns. So if you've got mobile phone numbers and consent from your subscribers to be texted, you can create opted in SMS campaigns. The next one is code email. This is if you're working with a design agency who have given you raw HTML or you've coded your own template externally. Inside that section there, you can cut and paste or upload HTML documents and the software will render those so you can see what the finished HTML looks like. But the route that we're going to take here is this one, design email. So let's click on that now. So what we can see here, we're now in the main templates library. Here we can see all of the stock templates that are available. There's a whole host of different designs in here, including finished designs and wireframes. And you're very welcome to use these as a jumping off point for your own design. But what we're going to do here is we're going to start with a blank template. So we hover over this one, start from scratch, and we hit the pencil icon to start working with that. So the first job is to give it a name. So this isn't customer facing, this is purely so you can identify your own campaigns later on. So let's call this my first campaign. So what we're looking at here, this is the window for designing a new email. Now this is split into two halves. The white page here is where we're going to design our email. And on the right hand side here, these are the tools that we have got available to build our new email. And these are split into three groups. Structure is where we will create a wire framework. The next one is content. This is where we would start dragging and dropping elements such as images or text into that framework. And settings is where we can control the global settings. Now this could be like link colors, font styles, or if you're working with your own custom font, you can upload the style sheet for that just there. Let's drag across some style blocks. Let's drag across some structure blocks. So we currently have a block that's 100% width. Now what we're looking at here is a block that is 100% wide. It will fill all of the email viewing screen. This is 600 pixels wide. So we can drag across other elements. So I'm gonna put a two column block 
and a three column block. Now if we hover over these, we can pick them up and drop them and we can work with them. So this block here, for example, I could move it just there. I can clone it, I can edit it, or I can delete it. So I'm gonna delete this block. Okay, so now we're gonna start putting some content into these structure blocks. So up to the top here, we're gonna look at content. Now we've got a number of boxes that we can pick here, ranging from text, images, dividing lines, buttons, spacers, social media, links to video, social share, countdown timers, and your own raw HTML. So let's put some blocks in here. I'm gonna put an image just here and some text next to that. And then in my 100% width block, I'm gonna put a main header image. I'm gonna put some text underneath that. Then I'm gonna put a button and then perhaps a dividing line and then some social media. So what we're gonna do here, now let's put an image in here. When we hover over each one of these blocks, we have three options. The pencil icon means we're gonna work with it. We're gonna put an image in there. The duplicate icon is if you've styled a block and you want to create a cloned copy of that to save you redoing the style for another block that you may want to look similar, or well, the X icon is just to delete it. So let's hit the pencil icon. And now we hit the image tile, we're now gonna upload an image. So where we are now, this is the main image library. Every time you upload an image into the software, it's going to live just here. So we can create folders by clicking on the plus icon. So if you've got something that you want to use over and over again, like your corporate branding, for example, you could create a folder called branding or logo. It just means that you can get to everything quickly. So up the top here, we've got some options. So the software is also linked up to image libraries. It's linked up to Giphy if you want to use animated GIFs. It's also linked up to Pixabay if you want to search through Pixabay's library of millions of professionally taken copyright free images. In this instance, we're going to upload an image from our desktop. Okay, it's drag and drop. So I have an image on my desktop that I'm gonna use and I drag that and I drop it. What we're gonna use here is the company logo. So here's our company logo. Now I can hyperlink that just here by typing in the address and I can style that just here. So I could choose to decrease the size. I could center align that. I can put some spacing around that to bump that down the page and I can save and close. Now let's look at the text here. So I can hit the pencil icon to work with that. So we can cut and paste text in here. So what we're gonna do in this instance, I'm going to delete the stock text that's in there. And I'm gonna put in here, telephone number. Now let's look at the style menu so we can start styling that. I can increase the font size. I can align that right and I can change the color. So here's our color picker. So we can pick anything off of the color wheel. We can use the sliders here to start tweaking the color, or we can use one of the predefined standard colors. Now, if you have a corporate color that you're using, if you've got the hex codes, you can just plug those in here. Now I'm gonna pick this red. Now the way that the favorites works underneath it here is as we start using colors, the software will remember these colors and it will store them in there. So if you've plugged in your company's corporate color code, you only have to do that once and the software will remember that choice. So let's use that red. Okay, there we are. So now let's put some spacing around that. Let's bring that in a little bit. Now we're gonna look at the main image. So let's go pencil icon. And now we're gonna pick an image. So what we're gonna do here, now let's use Pixabay to find the right image. So I click on Pixabay. Now here's the main images. Now I can search from a library of millions of photographs. So let's look in here for a wine bar. Here's all of the images. So let's pick this image just here. This is a nice image. And we're now gonna use that image inside our email. There's our image. We've also got a cropping tool here. Now to save you having to fire up Photoshop or similar and play around with the cropping or the sizing of that image, we can do all of this on the fly inside the software. So let's hit crop and all we gotta do is just drag the handles at the side here 
There we are, and we can start making changes to that image and we can crop that perfectly to the right size. When you're done, we just click finish. Let's hit save and close. Next up, we're gonna look at the text block underneath it. So we know now that we click on the pencil icon. So what we can do in here, if you have some text that you want to put in here, you can cut and paste that in. So you would go to Word or similar, you can right click, select your text, right click and copy it. And when you're ready to paste it inside the software here, you put the cursor where you'd want that text to be, right click and just select paste. That will then cut and paste your text from Word. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use mail merge. So when we imported that data, we had first names, last names and company name. I'm now going to use the person's first name so that every email that goes out will be personalized. So we do that by hitting merge at the top here. So if you've imported your own custom fields, you will be able to see them in this section here. I'm gonna select first name. There we are. So now when this email goes out, every single email will be personalized to the correct person. Now let's style that with the style menu. We can increase the font size and I can change the color. So there's that red that we used earlier. Let's pick gray for the text. Okay, I can put some spacing around that. So now let's go back into that text block. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a link inside here. So if you wanted to send, say, a PDF document that would be available for your viewers to click on to view, like you would send an email with an attachment, for example, this is how we do it. So you type in your text. We then highlight that text by left clicking the mouse. Moving up to these icons here, we're gonna hit the chain link icon. Now I want to upload a PDF here. So what I'm going to do here, so I could upload a PDF just here. Okay, that's now created a link to that PDF document. So when people click on that, they will be able to download it. Moving down, we're now gonna look at the button. So let's hit the pencil icon. We can change the text. And we can hyperlink that just here. So that's now created a hyperlink to that web address so that when anyone clicks on that, they'll be taken through to that. So now we're gonna style that. So let's click on style. Let's change the color. So there's that red that the software's remembered that we use. So let's pick that. I can increase the font size. I could change the width, I could change the height, I could round the corners. So there's all manner of options on here. Now we're gonna look at social media. So let's hit the pencil icon. So if we want to add a new social media network, we just click the button and we select which one. So let's pick LinkedIn. It's pre-populated with all of the icons for all of the main social media sites. We can drag the sort order of these around so if I then want to hyperlink this, I just type the address of our social media feed in here. Okay, that's now hyperlinked that. So let's style that, so click style. I'm gonna select that to display just the icon and there's all manner of icon sets in here. So let's pick this one for example. Save and close. Next up, we're gonna type in a subject header line. In this section, people will see this displayed in the preview section of their email browser. Okay, we can put emojis in there as well if we want to. We can also define custom preview text. Now, the way that an email reader works is when an email comes through, the browser will automatically grab the first few lines of text that it sees. But if we don't want this to be the preview text, we can set our own preview text in here. Next up, we're gonna go up to the actions menu. We've designed our email, we're now gonna have a look and see what that's going to look like in an inbox when it comes through. Okay, so this is a copy of how this will look on a desktop. We can specify mobile devices as well. So all of the main ones are in there and we update this list pretty regularly with all the new devices as they come out. So the software will automatically create what's termed as a fluid design. 
so it will automatically scale your email accordingly for the device that's being used to view it on. So here we can see that it's made this logo full screen and it's also put the phone number underneath it versus next to it on a desktop. All of these settings can be overridden if you want to. So if we go to this section at the top here, if we hit the pencil icon in the structure block, so in the blue section, we can go across to column and we can see here that we can change both the scaling of that and how that displays on a mobile device. Now by default the software is going to stack that one on top of the other on a mobile device so that it's not too small. If you want to override that you can do so by just clicking single row. The software also has an edit undo feature so we can walk back through design changes that we've made during this session this is handy if you've changed something and you want to revert to an earlier version. Now we're going to save and exit. So the software is equipped with automatic saving. So we can see this little red line progress bar that goes around here. The software is auto saving every 60 seconds. There we are, an auto save has just completed. Now the idea of this is so that you don't accidentally exit your campaign without saving it and lose your work. So the way that the software works with this feature is if multiple users are inside your account at the same time, only one of you can view this section here designing inside this particular campaign. The reason for that is that with an autosave feature, one person would keep oversaving the other person's work. So let's now hit save and exit. So we're now in the main campaign screen, just here. So here's the campaign that we built. So this screen is split into two halves, unsent and sent. Unsent are all the campaigns that we've designed but we haven't yet sent out anywhere. If we wanna click across to sent, here we can see all of the campaigns that we've sent previously. So if we designed a campaign that we like the look of and we want to use it again, if we hover over that, we can see that there's a duplicate icon just here. Now that's creating a brand new copy with a new ID number of that particular campaign. So we could then go into that with the pencil icon and we can insert the next batch of text. So now back up to the top, we're now going to send out a test. We would use this if we want to get this email design signed off by people in the business prior to doing a live send. So let's hit send test. Okay, all we gotta do is fill boxes. So let's drag across our campaign and our sender profile and we can put an email address in here if we want to. And that's now added it to the bottom here. So I've got another email address in there to send that to as well. So you can add as many contacts as you want to in here for the purposes of sending a test. Now let's hit test campaign. Okay, that's done. And the ding tells us that we've received it. Now we're going to go back up to the top. We're going to assume that everybody's seen that and they signed it off and we're now happy to do a live send. So back up to the top and we hit send campaign. Boxes to fill again. So here's the design we want to send. Now the software is saying which list or lists do you want to send this to. So we click inside our folder and we just quite simply keep dragging across lists to send to. We'll have that one and that one. So you can send one email design to multiple lists. This is handy as it means you don't need to do separate sends if you're sending out the same document to multiple lists. We can just easily group them all together. Now if we want to remove lists from that send, we can do so just here. Now let's add our sender profile. Okay, I'm going to pick mine. So this means that this email will go out from me. By default tracking is switched on here. This means that all of the opens and the reads etc will be tracked by the software. If you want to switch these off you can do that by toggling these to the off position. That means that tracking will be disabled. We can now pick if we want to send that now or schedule that for later. I'm going to schedule this for later. Let's have that go tomorrow at about midday. Send campaign. So this is the campaign, there's only four people on that list and it's going to go tomorrow at midday. Done. We've now successfully scheduled that campaign to send tomorrow. 
Where we are now is we are now on the main scheduled screen. In effect, this is a calendar. So here are all of the campaigns that this account has got set up. So here we can see, here's our midday send tomorrow. So let's have a look at that. I can preview that by clicking on it. There's our campaign. I can edit that just here if I want to. I can change the send time. If I want to take that out of the queue, for example, if I've now got some edits to make before sending it out, I just hit the X icon. Okay, that's now removed that send. What's happened here is it's put that send back into unsent campaigns. Here it is. And the credits that will have been used sending to that it has credited them back to you and put them back inside the credit booster section of your account. If you cast your mind back, that was the green tile on the dashboard. OK, let's now assume that campaign has gone out. We're now going to have a look at the analytics for it. So here we can click on the analytics. So all we've got to do here is we can pick which campaign we want to look at. We can pick more than one. We just click on the pin here and we can group up to eight together. So I've picked this four. So now let's hit generate. This top graph just gives us a snapshot of what happened with that campaign. Here we can see that we delivered 7,900 emails. We had 2,700 reads. We had some clicks, some social media engagements, and we had a few unsubscribes and some bounces. Now everything on here is clickable, so you can click on any part of these to take you into the detail page. Or we can just start scrolling down the page. So here we can see delivered and read. We can see from here that our read rate was 34%. And we can see who these people were just by clicking. Here we can see all of the email addresses. We've also got the date, the time, whether it was desktop or mobile, and what browser they were using. All of this data can be exported just here as a CSV report or a pre-formatted PDF. Let's come out of that now. OK, here we can see the geographic location, the country or continent of our users. And again, we can click on that to see who these people are. Here we've got browser and device. So we can see the percentage of people looked at it on a desktop versus mobile versus tablet. All of this is clickable. So we can click inside that to see the detail where we can view it or we can export a CSV of these people. Here we've got clicks. So with every email that you send out, if you have clickable links in there, like we designed an email with a blue button, these will all be displayed here. So here we can see that this campaign had seven clickable links. And if we wanted to see all of the people that clicked on our YouTube video, for example, we could click on that just there. If we want to group these people together in one convenient report, we can do that there just by clicking on 187 clicks. Okay, so moving down, we've got social media engagements. Fairly self-explanatory here. Again, we can click on that to see the detail. Now here we've got unsubscribes. So the way that unsubscribe works is as we've covered, the software will automatically insert an unsubscribe link at the end. Now, if people click on that, they're given two choices. The first one, just remove my email address from the list that emailed me. And the second one is take my email address off of all lists held inside this account and suppress it from future sends. What that means is that email address is then added to a suppression list and that list is scanned when you import new data. And if anyone's on there that's previously asked to be suppressed, they'll be removed from that import. The idea is it's a fail safe to stop you accidentally importing someone again who may have opted out, say, six months ago, for example. And we can see all of these people by clicking on them. Here we've got bounces. Now a bounce is split into two groups. These are hard bounces and soft bounces. A hard bounce is a permanent failure and that could be that the domain is dead. The software will exclude these after one failed attempt. And the next one is a soft bounce. A soft bounce is a temporary failure and the software will exclude those after two failed attempts. And here we can see the messages that this might be. We display the message as we receive it from your recipient's mail server. And in this instance, we can see that this person's mailbox was full. We've also got a jump to menu at the top here, so we can go to any one of those sections again. Now let's hit the exit button to come out of there. OK, we're going to go back to the dashboard. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at apps. 
So today we've taken you through importing a list, building a campaign, sending a test, sending it out, and having a look at the analytics. Now the idea of this is those are the basic tasks associated with working with data and sending it out. As and when you're ready to look at the next run at the ladder, there's a whole host in apps to consider. So let's click on that. So these are all included as standard in monthly subscription account. There's nothing conditional to pay for any of these. If you're on a pay as you go account, they will be extra items. Here we've got a subscribe form builder so we can construct a double opt-in GDPR compliant web form. You can use this in your website. This could be standalone, embedded, or it can be a pop-up. You can also work with a WordPress site with this. Here we've got a dupe remover. We'll scan your lists against each other and remove duplicate content. Spam score will give you a pre-flight check of your document and it's hooked up to all of the major service suppliers such as Gmail, Microsoft, Apple Mail, etc. And it will run a live score and tell you how inbox friendly your email is. My gallery is if you want to tidy up your images. We also have an open source API that you're very welcome to use if you want to create your own bespoke integration to hook up Email Blaster to any third party CRM system. This could be used to fire across email addresses directly from your CRM. Suppress is where all of your unsubscribes are kept. These are all of the people that have asked to be added to your suppression list. Now, if you're moving across from another supplier and you've got a list of previous unsubscribes, you can upload all of these into Suppress. And it means that people that may have opted out via your previous American supplier can all be excluded from future mailings. With List Builder, you can use this to create custom data sets. You can run off lists, say, of people that received your email and opened it and clicked on a link or opened it and didn't click on a link. This is a great tool here for segmenting your data and really drilling down into it. Reseller Manager and Reseller Client are two halves of the same app. You would use this if you want to create a network of standalone Email Blaster accounts so that all of the users within your business can have their own Email Blaster account. The Reseller Manager is the parent account. This can control all of these accounts. You only need one monthly subscription for this matched to the Reseller Manager account. It can then be used to send out email credits, campaigns, lists, and sender profiles to the sub accounts. Automate is for creating autoresponders. Inside here, you can create long chains of automated emails. If you wanted to set up an email to go once a week, for example, now this could be triggered by a new subscriber joining your list. You could hook it up to subscribe, for example. So every time a new subscriber joins, they're then started off on a chain of weekly emails. You can also set this to birthdays or a specific date as the trigger point. It can also be decision based. So if someone clicks on link number one in an email, you can then use Automate to send them a whole host of emails that are associated with link number one. Insight is our version of Google Analytics. If you install this small piece of code on your website, it will then open up the software's analytics to give you visibility over what your subscribers are doing when they click on your email link and go through to your website. A-B test is for split testing. You can A-B or A-B and C test variants of your campaign, your sender profile, your send time, etc. It's a great way of taking the mystery out of it and finding out which is the winning segment. There's also a desktop version of Email Blaster. Again, it's still web-based, it just doesn't require to be tied to a web browser. Okay, let's go back up to the top, back up to the dashboard. Now the last section that we're gonna look at today is upgrades. If you're currently on a free demo account and you are ready to join us as a monthly customer, or you'd like to just purchase some pay-as-you-go credits, you can do that inside the upgrade store. What will happen here is your credits will just be added to your current demo account. You can purchase these by selecting them just here. If you'd like to join us as a monthly customer, we hit the upgrade button at the bottom here. Now monthly subscription packages include everything, all of the apps, and you get free telephone support as well as and when you need it during UK business hours. This is based on a 30 day rolling contract. So your credits are issued at the beginning of each month and everything resets at the end of each month. If you'd like to upgrade your package at any point, you're welcome to move that up or down via this control panel here. You can do that at any point before the first of each month. 
If you'd like to leave at any point, you just need to drop us an email. Your monthly subscription is based on a 30-day rolling contract, so we'd ask for 30 days notice if you want to leave. Okay, so we just pick the package and we hit buy it now. It, what will happen is your current free demo account will be automatically upgraded to a full monthly account. You will be able to see access to all of the apps and all of the content that you've already designed and your lists that you've uploaded in your demo account will all still remain. Back to the dashboard. That concludes our demo for today. If you've got any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email us directly on support at emailblasteruk.com or you can message us inside the messaging system at the top here. Thank you for your time and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.